All right, pull out your bulletin. <laughs> Being honest, how many people put turkey? <laughs> well, we got some honest people in there. What other answers did we get? Friends. Friends. Family. Family. Salvation. And some of us associated turkey and family. <laughs> because because my family eats a lot of turkey, of course. That's why. Yeah. Okay, so we got turkey, we got family, we got friends. Whether or not they're associated, what else do we get? I'm sorry? Pilgrims. 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 Wow, I haven't thought about that since elementary school. <laughs> Pilgrims. Actually, that's not true. I thought about that a couple of days ago when I was working on the message. I had a whole line of thought, and by the time I got to type it, it was gone. <laughs> but I do remember I thought Pilgrims. <laughs> I got a, a couple passages I want to read to you, just to start. Now, um, I know we've been working through Galatians chapter 5. We've been working on the fruits of the Spirit, getting an understanding of what they are. And, and I, I started off that series by telling you, this was not an all-inclusive list. This is not a comprehensive list that Paul is giving us. These are, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exemplary list. It's examples. It's a sampling of what fruit is in a person's life. And, and I told you last week, I believe that being thankful is one of the fruits of God's Spirit living in you. Okay? And... So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, why I believe that. Now, you can agree, you can disagree, that's okay. Um, it, it's not going to deny you entrance into heaven if you disagree with Pastor Glenn. God might slap you on the wrist, <laughs> but he's, he's not going to deny you entrance. He's going to slap me on the wrist too, I know it. <laughs> so, a um, couple of scriptures that I want to start off with. First one, don't, don't bother flipping here. Um, if you want to flip to one place, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, because that's where we're going to start. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to pick up in verse 16. And you've already heard this passage a couple of times in, in the fruit that we've covered. Um, starting in verse 16, Paul writes and he says, Rejoice always. So when should we rejoice? Okay, when should we not rejoice? Okay, so we understand that Paul is using inclusive language, not exclusive language, right? He's including everything. Rejoice always. Always. Then he goes on and he says, pray without ceasing. So when should we pray? Always. When should we stop? Never. Never. It's a lifestyle. Now, does that mean that you can't do anything other than pray? No. It means you're always in an attitude of prayer. That at any moment as God drops something into your spirit, you will lift it right back up to him. Uh, Paul addresses one of the church and he says, as often as I remember you, I pray for you. Now, we, we like to go, oh, I'm praying for you. I'm always praying for you. That's not true. Sometimes you're thinking about turkey. <laughs> and sometimes you're thinking about your family and friends that are turkeys. And sometimes you're thinking about other things. And that, that's okay. That's okay. But as often as God brings them to your mind, you pray for them. And you, you know, we don't need to get a lab, but we don't need King James clergy prayers. There's a place for those down there on the other side of town. Okay? God wants open, honest prayers. He says that the time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. Okay. God wants you to be honest with him. Now, I'm probably going to offend some of you, but quite honestly, it drives me nuts when people are having a hard time and they think they're hiding it from God. 
And they come to him in prayer with these holy prayers, and they're not honest with him. Yet he knows. He knows what you're going through. He knows what's in your heart that you're stewing. God, I want you to bless my brother and my sister and my turkey. Amen. Okay, look, you're not impressing anyone. Okay? And if you are trying to impress them, you're praying for wrong reasons. God understands. He understands because he put you there. He put you in that place to grow you. Amen. He put you in that place to drive you to him. That you would throw yourself on him and he could lift you up and make of you what he will. Okay, that's why it's happening. So don't be one of these people that is not honest with God. All right? So we rejoice always. We pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What do we give thanks for? Okay, remember, he's using inclusive language here. So what do we give thanks for? Well, yeah, we give thanks for all the things we're rejoicing for. They kind of go hand in glove. Okay, we give thanksgiving in all circumstances. Okay, so if you get ham for Thanksgiving this year, give thanks. You won't get that at my house. We're just doing turkey and lasagna. <laughs> you do Thanksgiving your way, I'll do it mine. <laughs> we give thanks always. Now, the one thing I want you to notice in this is Paul is not presenting this to us as a good idea. He's not presenting this to us as something we might want to consider. He's not even presenting it to us as a better way. He is presenting this to us as a directive. Why? Because of that last clause in that last verse that I read there. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Okay, I'm, I'm included in you because he's speaking to me as well. This is what God wants. This is God's desire. This is his purpose for us. To rejoice always. But God, you don't understand. I've got it tough. Yeah, he understands. Remember scripture says that we are not facing anything that Jesus didn't face. He understands. But God, it's hard. Yeah, he knows it's hard. All the more reason to throw yourself on him. Remember what he told us? What are we supposed to do with our burdens? What do we do? We take them and we just shovel them right across to him. But we play yo-yo. Here you go, I want it back. Give it to God. Here you go. I got it back. And we walk around and we're burdened. And we're heavily laden. And we're weary. God's got a lot bigger shoulders than we do. We take them and we give them to him. Now that doesn't mean he's not going to give some of it back to us. Sometimes he gives it back to us. Why? To grow us. To strengthen us. To mature us. The idea is that we keep passing them on to him. And as we go through it, we learn to walk in step with him, and we learn how to get past this struggle. And then guess what happens? You graduate from general math to algebra. Some of us do. I'm still I'm kind of in the addition phase. And some of us graduate from algebra to geometry. Some of us get to graduate from geometry to trigonometry or algebra 2 or calculus. Some of us never get out of 2 plus 2. His desire is that we would be mature and complete, not lacking 
anything. All right? So, um, stay here. I'm, I'm going to read a couple of passages for you. I'm going to flip back a little bit to Colossians, uh, chapter 3. In verse 12, I'm going to start reading in verse 12. It says, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has complaint against another, forgiving each other as Christ has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. See, see the pause here? And be thankful. Again, this is not a good idea. It's not a good practice. This is a directive. See, this is something we can choose to do or not do. Because you know what the opposite of being thankful is, right? Grumbling. Because if you're not giving thanks for something, you're going to grumble about it. Okay? Now, let's say you're, you're actually a better person than I am, and you find that happy medium where... You're not thankful, but you're not grumbling. You're not anything. Is that really what God yeah. wants for you? To not have anything? To not be thankful? If, if that were the case, he would say, at best, be thankful. At worst, be neutral. But I, I can't find that in here. I don't find that directive. I don't find that option. When he says be thankful, that's it. Now, I want to caution you because grumbling, God does not like. Think about the children of Israel. They've just been delivered from Egypt. They've seen plagues come upon their, their, their masters that never touched them. They've seen the firstborn of everything the Egyptians had, their children, their animals, die. They saw God open up the sea before them that they could walk through on dry ground and collapse it behind them, completely annihilating the Egyptian army. They're singing and dancing and praising God. And a short time later, they're doing what? We want onions! Oh, oh for Pete's sake. Of all the things they could miss. Really? We want onions. Back in Egypt, we had onions and it was good. That's sick. <laughs> That's, to me, that's just evidence of sin. <laughs> okay? Really, though, think about it. They're wailing in Egypt such that God hears them. They're begging and crying for deliverance. And God sends Moses. And he moves by the power of his hand and delivers them and sets them free. And they have the audacity to say, we want to go back. It was better there. Every time this happened, it happened more than once. Every time it happened, something bad happened to Israel. People got burned by fire. People got swallowed by the earth. People got bitten by snakes. People had quail coming out their noses. <laughs> Nothing good ever came of grumbling. Nothing. So when Paul writes, and be thankful, 
It's not just a, a pointless directive. There's a purpose behind it. Why? Because it's God's will. It's God's heart. It's His desire. Why? Because it gets our minds off of ourselves and gets our minds into Him. It gets our minds off of our problems and our gripes and our complaints, our discontent, our greed, our lust. Now, keep in mind, most of the time that the word lust is used in the New Testament, it's not talking about a sexual sin. It's talking about the lust of the eyes, wanting something you don't have. I want that. I want the iPhone 64. <laughs> the one you have to lift up with two hands. <laughs> they got a special carrier for that. It's called a backpack. <laughs> My iPhone 63 isn't good enough anymore. Be thankful. It gets you out of yourself. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Paul writes, he says, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. Hmm. Let me read that again. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. Instead of these things, let there be thanksgiving. So now he's not just telling us to be thankful, but he's actually telling us instead of talking about things that we shouldn't be talking about, we should be talking about things we're thankful for. Now I've made it kind of easy for you because I've put an insert in the bulletin. Happy Thanksgiving. There's a list with a bunch of blank spots and two that are filled. Okay? Now, I, I took care of the two most commonly used ones. What are you thankful for? God and family. Okay, I took care of those for you. You don't have to hurt your brains. But I left... A bunch of blank spots for you. And I would encourage you, not just for Thursday, not just for Thursday, but I want you to make a list of things that you are thankful for. Things that God is and things that God has done for you. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. Because I've got a whole bunch of things that I'm going to kind of help you fill in the blanks. Instead, let there be thanksgiving. One more, uh, Philippians chapter 4. We talked about this one as well. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. Okay, so what are we allowed to be anxious about? <coughs> Nothing. I love, I, Paul makes it so simple for us. Yeah, everything and nothing. He doesn't, you, well, what about in this case? Does that fall under anything? Yeah. Then don't. Well, what about this? Does that fall under everything? Well, yeah. Then do. It's that simple. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, oops, there it is again, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Now, I, I have a confession to make. A lot of times I get the first part of this right with my prayers and supplications, my prayers and petitions. But I tend to come at it like this. God, you've really put me in a tight spot here. And I really need you to step up and fix it for me. And I don't really like what you've got me going through. And I want it to be better. What am I doing? I'm grumbling. Now, how does that work with Thanksgiving? It doesn't. 
And so what he's having me do is he's having me every day. We, Chris and I actually do something. We've started it fairly recently. Every day we make notes for each other. And in our notes, we write down each other's successes. I write down the things that I see throughout the day that she has done right. And she writes down throughout the day the things that she has seen that I have done right. And there's been a couple times in the last couple weeks that we've been doing this that God has spoken to me while she and I are in the midst of a unpleasantness. <laughs> Mild unpleasantness. And he's told me, you need to work on the list. What list? <laughs> you know what list. Go work on the list. I'm busy. Give me a minute. <laughs> you need to sit down right now, pick up the phone, because I do it on my phone, and write the list. Work on the list. And it's really weird what happens. Because as I start to write these things down, I have to start thinking about the good in her. And all of a sudden, the bad starts to diminish. And I, God's really clever. Have you ever noticed that? And that's the whole principle that we're working on here. If you are spending your time giving thanksgiving, and you're thanking him for everything that he is and everything that he's done, and don't get those confused, because oftentimes we thank him for what he's done, but we don't thank him for who he is. He wouldn't do what he's done if he isn't who he is. He's motivated to do good to us because he is good. Because he is loving. Because he is kind. And he's perfect in those. He's also perfect in justice. So that's why we need the grace. That's why we need the blood. All right? So. In everything, by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It doesn't end there. Because you, you, you see the next word? And. That's a connecting word. You need to join the first part with the second part. Like Glenn and Christy. Like pickles and deep fried. <laughs> You have Thanksgiving how you want. I will have it how I want. Okay? So the first condition is being connected to the second condition. But it's beyond that. Because in this one, it's a cause and effect statement. So this and becomes very important. Okay? And this and is not one of the words that we have to supply because the Greek doesn't work like the English does. This word is actually used in the Greek. Okay? So, in the original writings, God intended this to be joined together. So, don't be anxious. Be in prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, <coughs> let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God... Think about that, the peace of God. Is there any better peace? Hmm. Boy, you could make a sermon out of that, couldn't you? Oh, wait, we're already in the middle of one of those. You're going to have to come back in another couple weeks when we finish that up. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. So who can understand it? No one. See, that's the point. You can't figure it out will, 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 not might, not could, not should, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, it's a promise. It's a cause and effect. God is putting something into play that he is obligated himself to. If you do this, I will do this. It's a promise. Okay? So, <clears throat> you think being thankful is worth it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was weak. 
Do you think being thankful is worth it? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Now I'm just going to, we've got a number of scriptures that I'm going to run through. Okay? If you want to see my notes afterwards, come talk to me. I'll make a copy of them for you so you can kind of go back and examine these a little bit more detail later. But I want to, I've, I've just done a, a fairly quick survey of scripture. And we presented to you the requirement, the dictate, the mandate to be thankful. What have we got to be thankful for? Well, let's take a look at what Scripture says. Okay? Let's, let's take a look at just... These, this is not an all-inclusive list. These are just things that I just kind of went, yeah, there's that. Oh, yeah, and there's that. Oh, and this. Okay? So, feel free to add to this. God is always, always faithful. If he says it is so, he can bet it is so. If he says he will do it, he will do it. Because he is always faithful. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? Because he cannot deny himself. Do you see that? That's his nature. He is faithful because that's who he is. How about he keeps his promises? Let's, let's jump all the way back to Genesis. All right? Flip, flip with me if you would to Genesis chapter 9. Anybody know where we're going with this? He keeps his promises. So there's been a pretty significant event, pretty heavy rainfall. <laughs> Meteorologists completely did not call it. <laughs> the earth has been flooded. The floods, the waters have receded. God is speaking to Noah. And in verse 12, he says something. He says, and God said, this, this is the sign of the covenant that I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. I guess that kind of proves whether or not you can see the rainbow from the top down. But see, God put that there, not just as a reminder to us, but as a reminder to himself. He says, when I see it, I will remember my covenant to you and all flesh. He's made a promise, and he's kept that promise, because from that time to this, the entire earth has never been flooded again. Now, there's localized things that happen, some of them pretty horrific. Some of them devastating. But never over the entire earth. He's promised us that would never happen again. He is faithful to his promises. All right? He takes care of our needs. Matthew chapter 6 says, For the Gentiles seek after all these things. What things? What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear. For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. All. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added to you. Okay? You understand God knows your needs better than you do? 
Do you understand that? I, I had this revelation one day because we needed a car. We didn't get a car the way that I thought we would get a car. And God made me realize we don't need a car. We need transportation. We need a way to get from here to there. And I'm sitting there praying, okay, God, I need a vehicle, I need a vehicle, I need a vehicle. And God's saying, you need to trust me to get you from here to there. And I will do that. And he sees that you need all of these things. Food, drink, covering. I, I see everyone here is covered. I don't see anyone that looks like they're starving. I don't see anyone that looks like they're incredibly dehydrated. And you know what? If you are, there's coffee, tea, and water. Help yourself. God knows you need them, and he will provide them. First Chronicles 16, 8 and 9. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. How about we give thank you, thanks, for all his wonderful deeds? All his wonderful works. All the incredible, fantastic things that he's done. If you can't see the incredible, fantastic things that he's done in your life, I would challenge you. <clears throat> Get out of yourself. Get over yourself and open your eyes. Because I dare say, I could sit with any one of you and within a matter of moments come up with a list of at least ten things that you could be thankful for. Ten things that God has done for you. Let's look a little bit further. How about his righteousness? Psalm 717 says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. And I will sing praises to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Did you ever think about thanking him for being righteous? Wow, what a thought. Now, I, I got to tell you, as I went through these, some of these things surprised me because I, I don't ever think about it. To give thanks to God for being righteous? Well, yeah. For, for him being perfect in his righteousness. That's what holiness is all about. He's completely unique, completely set aside. He knows no sin. Giving thanks to him for his righteousness. How about because he's good? Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures... Oh, till the end of the commercial, till the end of the pot pie, to the end of whatever. No, his steadfast love endures... Forever. Uh, I don't know how your guys week went. Mine went pretty good up until it started to stink. <laughs> and then it was kind of like pretty good stink, pretty good stink, pretty good stink. You know, that's kind of the way it went. But one of the things that Christian and I determined is that when things stink, I'm not listening to the right voices. Okay? I'm not listening to what I know to be true. I start listening to what it looks like. If he is righteous, and he is good, and he is always with me, and he is always faithful, why would I doubt in the moment? <clears throat> we have a thing... Um, there's a group of us that pray together often. 
We pray for each other and we pray with each other. And one of the things that is most often a prayer request is this. Focus. I talked a while back about the one degree of focus that I believe we need. That we set our eyes on him and we keep our eyes fixed on him and all the stuff around us, all the chaos that's around us, he takes care of. So that's one of the most frequent prayer requests that we have is focus. Now, you know, guess what? I spent a lot of time this week without focus. And I can't see anything correctly. Okay? Now, I kind of know where most of you sit because you usually sit there. And I know Mike and Joe tried to throw me off today because they moved over here. <laughs> and so did Scott and Kathy. They moved way up. Okay, and I, I already told the Golden Girls you were never allowed to move. <laughs> you guys have done that to me once. You're not allowed. Okay? Focus. We have to believe what he has said to be true is the truth. Okay? All right. So he is good. How about we thank him for Jesus? We're coming up on the Christmas season, and we'll get to hear quite a bit about this coming up. Luke chapter 2 says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, them being the shepherds, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For who? All the people. So which people get the good news of great joy? Everyone. It's available to everyone. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. <clears throat> good news of great joy. How about for sending his spirit? But you know that's a pretty significant thing, right? Because Jesus told the disciples, don't worry that I'm going because it's better for you because my Father's going to send a spirit. And in a later verse, he says, I am going to send my spirit. All right? So uh, Luke, I'm sorry, um, John chapter 14. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. <coughs> Did you ever think about thanking God for sending His Spirit that we can have understanding? I'll tell you, it's incredible to me the number of people that I meet and I talk with that do not get this. They read it and it doesn't make sense. Why is that? Why can you and I read this and come to a common agreement on just about everything in here, but somebody else reads it and go, I don't even understand what he's talking about. What does this mean? Well, let's look at that verse again. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. It's because we have his spirit living inside of us that kind of turns on the light. You know that bulb that's above our head? You know, some of us are a little bit dimmer than others. <laughs> we thank God for the light that we have because it's his spirit that gives us that light. It gives us that understanding. And the idea is that we should all be on a dimmer switch that always goes up, not down. An upward dimmer switch because his spirit is always living in us. We should be learning and growing day by day by day by day by day. Don't ever get satisfied with where you are and what you know about God. Because what you will ever be able to know about God, you won't be able to fit into a thimble compared to what there is to know about God. Don't ever be satisfied. Press in. Press on. Seek more. Salvation. How about salvation? Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own. It is the gift of God. 
not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Okay? How about victory over death? Do you ever give God thanks for that? That at the end of this life, we have an eager expectation of something better to come? Do you ever think about that and give thanks to God for that? Because before the cross, they didn't have that. Look at some of the writings in the Old Testament about men that were coming to the end of their life. And they were praying that this would not happen. <clears throat> what does scripture say? O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not that we don't grieve when someone we love dies. We don't grieve like the world does because we have an expectation of something to come beyond. And we have a reason to believe that because if it were the cross only, we would believe that he has taken away sin. But he didn't leave it there because when that was done, he brought his son back to life. He raised him from the dead imperishable. And that is the promise that is extended to us. How about for brothers and sisters in Christ? You ever give God thanks for brothers and sisters in Christ? Not just the ones you like. <laughs> Paul writes in Colossians, Chapter 1, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Hmm. Thanking God for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Even the one that keeps getting into your chair before you get there. So you have to keep moving around. <laughs> What about for the fruit of his spirit? Do you ever think about thanking God for the fruit of his spirit? Do you ever think about the fact that his spirit living inside of you has made you a better person to other people? Not just to yourself, but to other people. Do you ever think about the fact that God is making you somewhat likable? Now look at, look at the fruit of the Spirit that He's given us. If His Spirit is living in you, this is the natural outgrowth of that event. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are all natural outgrowths of having His Spirit living inside of you. Now, don't get me wrong. You look at me and go, <laughs> wow, I'm glad I'm not there. But then you look at somebody else and go, wow, I still got a long way to go. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's not what we're called to do. Don't measure yourself against me. Don't measure yourself against your brothers and sisters. Measure yourself against Jesus Christ, who is the perfect example. But you don't do that under despair because you also look back and you see how far he's brought you. Okay? You see how far he's brought you. Okay. I have more joy in my life today than I ever have in all the previous years. And we talked about what joy is. It's not the same as happiness. Okay? But I am nowhere near content with the amount of joy that I have. I get frustrated because of how little I have. And he often reminds me, look where you were a while back. Remember back there? Okay, see how far you've come so far? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to be faithful to keep adding to it. Can we do that now? Sometimes I'm like a kid at Christmas. 
I, I don't know about you guys here, my parents were evil. <laughs> they, they were horrible at Christmas. My mom didn't put our names on the presents. She wrote codes. So you had no idea which present was yours. <laughs> and we slept downstairs, and we were not allowed to come upstairs until mom and dad said it was okay. But when you came upstairs, all you could do was look at the gift that was unwrapped, because they would always put one gift out on the floor for you, and you could look at your stocking. You know how I feel about Christmas stockings. Completely a waste of time. I, I don't think, after the first couple years, I don't think I ever looked at them. Mom would be like, oh, you didn't open your stocking. Oh, yeah, I know, because I got underwear, I got socks, I got an apple, I got an orange, I got candy canes, and I got mixed nuts. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> and I really, Mom and Dad came up for Christmas a couple years ago, and I was going to get them. But I told all my siblings, I got a stocking for Mom and Dad, I got underwear, I got socks, I got an apple, I got an orange, I got candy canes, and mixed nuts. And it was the worst thing ever because my parents were stumped. <laughs> they were like, oh, look at this. This is wonderful. They ruined my Christmas. <laughs> ruined it. But that's how I feel like I am with the fruit of his spirit. God, I want it, and I want it now. He says, you're going to get it. Just, just let it build. Step by step, step by step, step by step. Nobody would recognize you if I gave them to you all at once. They'd all go somewhere else. <laughs> all right. Two other things I want to address. I'm going to touch on these real quick. I said a little bit earlier about what he's done for you. Okay? James chapter 1. <coughs> Verse 16 and 17 says, Every, or, I'm sorry, do not be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good gift and every perfect <clears throat> gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Okay? So, so do you understand that every good thing in your life comes from Him? Do you understand that? Every good thing in your life comes from him. And a lot of things that you think are bad really aren't bad. They're really good things that he's putting in your life. Amen. Do you understand that even those things that you think you did, he did? 1 Corinthians 4 says, For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? So, those of you that have gifts and talents that help you to excel in areas, thank God for those. Don't allow yourself to fall into pride thinking you're all that. Because what God has given, God can take away. And if you're not thankful, there's a good chance he will. Why? Because he wants you miserable? No. He wants you to come to him with the right attitude, understanding that he is everything, you are nothing, and that you only become everything because you've got him. Our job is to humble ourselves before him. His job is to lift us up. He doesn't need our help. Well, God, let me show you. Let me give you my resume. I do this really well. I do this pretty darn good. That, I got it. I got it. Oh, don't forget this, because, you know, everybody says I do this really well, and people are really excited when I do this. And God's just going, really? Really? Go back and read the book of Job, please. Please. You, you think you've done things? 
where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? When I spoke to the sea and said, you can come this far and no further. When I send the lightning out and it comes back and reports to me. When I let loose the wind. Where, where, where were you? What was your resume again? I'm having difficulty hearing you because of all the things I've done. <laughs> oh yeah, those things? I did those too. Okay? Let's get a right attitude this Thanksgiving. Let's really start looking at everything that he has done for us. Let's look at everything that he is. And have hearts that move toward him in thanksgiving. Not just the day that the United States of America celebrates thanksgiving. How about every day? Because we're called to give thanks when? Always. 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 So that list, I intentionally put Happy Thanksgiving on it. Okay? Actually, I left it because it's from last year. I left Happy Thanksgiving on it. Not because it's for you to take out on Thursday and read aloud over your turkey or ham or lasagna. It's because I want you to look at this every day. Every day. And I would encourage you, first thing in the morning, you're standing at the sink like this. <laughs> Put that note where you can see it. If you are like me, and when your eyes open up, you're fully functional, you're awake, put it beside your bed. Man, as soon as your eyes pop open, ding! I can't do that. i got to put my glasses on first, and then... Start the day off right with Thanksgiving. Getting a right mindset. And if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, read your spouses. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you because you are so good to us. You are so gracious to us. You are so loving and kind. Your mercies are new every morning. Father, your grace is beyond the measure of our sin. We thank you that you love us. We thank you, Father, for your Son, the cross, your Spirit that seals us, that brings natural outgrowth of fruit in our lives. Father, that inspires us to do things that would bring you honor, <coughs> inspires us to do things that would help our brothers and sisters, inspires us to do things that would go out and bring glory to your name in a dark world. We thank you, Father. I ask that you would teach us to be a people of thanksgiving, that as we gather together with family and friends on Thursday, we would have new purpose in celebrating we would have a new purpose in why we are doing what we are doing. We would have new revelation, Father, of ways which we can express our thankfulness and gratitude to you. Open our eyes, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.